morning, guys. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead slash Papa's Place. Guys, today I'm out here, and our weather goes from cold to hot. Today and yesterday, it was up in the 80s. Well, it ain't to the 80s yet. It's going to get to the 80s today. Hot, humid. So I'm going to plant me some zipper cream peas. Now, you who's been following along, y'all notice. My ground cover here, I had it all the way over to my potato row. And I said I was going to plant a row of okra and then a row of zipper cream peas. And then it was going to be watermelons and cantaloupe. Well, it didn't make much sense. After I got to thinking about it, I'd have had to burn a whole bunch of holes in that cover to plant cream peas. So I come back over here and I remove my cover back and made me a row, which was already a row, but I healed my taters and then raked it back up a little taller here. And that's where I'm gonna be planting my zipper cream peas. Now, zipper cream peas here in the South is a style of field pea. It's a creamy, white, delicious tasting pea. They're easy to shell. And guys, they heat tolerant for good down here for the high humidity and the heat. But like I said, they good eating. So that's what we're going to be planting today. And by the way, guys, what do y'all think about these redneck hillbilly shorts? Yeah. And a pair, a couple pair of overalls, and these done got busted out so much on, I just made me some short shorts side of it. Now, some of you may be laughing at me, but that's all right. I talked to Jesus about this, and he said he still loved me anyway. That's the good thing about Jesus. He loves us no matter what. But I like my overalls and I like shorts. So now I got a couple of pair of both y'all gonna be seeing me in. But anyway, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna take me a little hole or something and I'm gonna make me a little trench right down the top of that row there. And I'm debating right over to put a little triple 13, but I don't think I am. I think I'm gonna just side dress it with some triple 13. Because that way I won't have to make my trench as deep. If I'm, if I'm gonna put it under the trench, I'd have to make a deeper trench, cover my triple 13 back up a little bit, and then put the piece. I don't think I'm gonna go to that trouble. I'm gonna just make me a little trench, plant my peas, cover them up, and then side dress them with a little triple 13. But that's what I'm gonna get started on. And then after that, we might plant some watermelons today, cantaloupe, I don't know. Now, I ain't never used this little flat rake to make me no little trench, but I'm gonna try it and see how she works out. It ain't gotta be much of a trench, cause I'm gonna pull the dirt back over the top of it. Hey guys, now we got this good little trench down through there. Next up, I'm gonna just space my peas down through here, but I'm gonna plant them thick. I don't use no inoculate on these peas. I would if I had some, but I ain't got none. Which, for the most part, I never used inoculate anyway. But I'm gonna plant these peas real thick down through here, and if they're coming up and they're too thick, then I can just every other one out or every other two or three who knows but we're going to plant them thick down through there now these zipper cream peas here I get from my local feed and seed store and I'm going to plant them about every three inches to make sure I got enough feed seed here and then I'll come back maybe put some in between if they are I got some pea seeds left. 
Zipper cream peas is planted, but I don't think I'm gonna put no triple 13 down through there because my garden had enough rabbit manure and compost put in it before I covered it up. I'm gonna wait and after they start coming up, when I fertilize my side dress my taters there, then I side dress these peas. But guys, I said I never used this little device right here for making a trench. Well, that worked pretty well, but I will tell you, I think every gardener needs one of these. This thing is so handy in the garden, I use it all the time. It's actually a concrete rake that you pull concrete down with. It's, I don't know, about 16 inches, maybe 18 inch blade on it. Aluminum handle, it's light, but it's wide enough you can, it ain't made for hoeing, but you can pull dirt and it's so handy to have around your homestead for all kind of uses, especially in the garden. But that's something you may want to check out. Matter of fact, I'll put a link in the description below where you can purchase one of these. But when I purchased this years ago, it was for concrete and it's just been around the house and this is just, like I said, it gives you so much in the garden. So now guys, I'm gonna get my little torch out. And we're gonna get over here and I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna burn the holes where I'm gonna plant my okra. And probably gonna space out where I want my watermelons and cantaloupes and burn my holes. And I'll show y'all what I use to burn holes in this ground fabric. All right guys, up next, we're gonna burn holes down through here where we can plant our okra on this outside roof. Now what I got planned is I got some okra started. I'm going to plant a half a row of my okra starts. The other half a row I'm going to plant seeds straight in the ground. That way all my okra may not get ready at one time. But at some point them ones that's planted in the ground is going to catch up with these other ones. And that's usually how that works. Now y'all know I got ground cover here and I got irrigation up under it. But that drip irrigation tape was buried under the dirt a little bit but to be safe i'm not going to cut my holes straight on top of it that's why i stretched that string tight from one end to the other the drip irrigation tape is straight to where you can see the little road that i pulled up kind of dips and darts from one side to the other one so i'm gonna burn my holes offset so I won't mess up and burn a hole through my drip irrigation tape. Now I'm gonna plant my okra two foot apart. So I just got me a little stick and I ain't gonna start on the end. I'm gonna start two foot from the end of this row, burn me a hole and then I take my stick and every two foot burn me a hole down through there. Now one of the best ways I found to burn a hole and this is another little tool I think anybody that gardens and uses ground fabric needs one of these little hand torches on a hose. If you use one of them little torches that goes right here on top of the bottle, for instance, like that's what it looks like, like that end sitting on there with a knob. When you turn this bottle upside down, it sends raw fuel there and of course your fire goes out. So this has been the best one I've come across, this style. That way you can just toast your bottle and burn your hose. This torch here comes for three different style tips, so I can use it when I'm soldering copper or all sorts of things. But it works really good for cutting holes in this fabric. Now I know they make a butane torch that works good because you can turn them upside down and the fire stay lit. 
but you steady have to refill them or buy refillments of butane and it's a lot more expensive than these little bottles right here so what I'm going to do, I'm going to light my little torch and I'm going to go down through there burning my holes every two foot. And then we're probably going to jump over there and go on and burn our holes for our watermelons and cantaloupe, which I'm going to be doing every three foot. Y'all see how quick and easy it is when you have one of these style torches? If you have one of them other styles, you're going to be turning it over and it's steady going to be going out on you. Y'all can see my row ain't that straight because like I said, I had to offset it once it got down there because my row wasn't straight. But my, my drip line, when I put it in, I pulled it tight and got it good and straight. And that's why I'm using a strain line. So now I'm going to move my string line over to the next row where I'm going to start the watermelons. And I can get it strung down the top of the drip tape. And I'll know where to burn the holes in them. And how I know where I'm lining this up, guys, is because I got a cutoff valve sticking out right there. Where I can cut on and off each row, because of course my okra ain't gonna need the same amount of water as my watermelons and cantaloupe. So I can I, I can use that. And then on the other end is where I got the drip tape closed off. I got a little pin in the ground at the end of each one of them so I can come back and stretch my line when I got ready to do this. Now guys on the watermelon. I'm actually gonna start out the first one about six foot from the end. And the reason I'm doing that is cause I'm gonna try to keep the watermelons on the ground fabric and not running off out here in the yard as long as I can. So I'm gonna start out with the first one six foot from the end and then go every three foot. Get y'all up here where you can actually see it burning in there. It burns through real quick. I'll come back with me just a spoon and dig that out. Cause usually when I plant a plant, I dig that out and then I just use some potting mix or something to plant my plant in the hole. Turned it up too high and gonna turn it back down and turned it off. Alright guys, that's how quick and easy it is to cut your holes in your little ground fabric here. 
And some of you saying, well, that's a lot of work going through for gardening. Well, it is a little extra work up front. If you watch my videos along this summer, you'll see watermelons out here, hopefully. But you won't be seeing them growed up in grass where you can't see the watermelons for the grass. So if nothing else, I really like it for the watermelons and anything that binds. Now that last row over there, I ain't gonna cut no holes in. I'm gonna save that row for right now in case I decide to plant something else. Cause I may want to plant something to where I want my holes closer together so I ain't gonna cut them holes. And I may end up not planting nothing there and that just give the watermelons more room to run without getting in the peas. So I ain't gonna cut no holes in it. All I gotta do is keep that bile turned off and it won't water that row unless I plant something on it. So now let's go get our watermelons out of the greenhouse and we're gonna start planting. As I got my okra starts here, this is Cleansum spineless okra. I got me a bucket of potting mix slash compost mixed up here. You'll see how I'm gonna do this in these little holes. Clemson spineless is the only okra I'm going to plant this year. Last year I tried jambalaya and red burgundy. And I'm going back to what we always raised around here, which is Clemson spineless. Now what I'm going to use, I may go get a spoon, but I'm going to start out with just my knife. And it may be good enough. I just dig some of that soil out of there. Reach it off to the side. And guys, another good thing about this ground cover is when you mow and grass blows out on it, or when I get done here and all this dirt, I go get my leaf blower and I'll blow this off. And blow all that dirt off. And I'm gonna just set that little plant right down there and I'm gonna take some of this potting soil slash compost mixture I run out of compost, guys. I normally have my own compost, but I run out and I had to go buy some potting soil. And of course, I just bought, I had some, and then I just bought some more of the cheapest stuff they had. And mixed it up with some little bit of compost I had scrapped up around here. But that's how I'm going to be planting them right there. We'll show you one more time. There's some kind of weed right there needs to pull. I'm gonna show you one more time and then I'll set y'all back up and we'll go into fast speed and get these plants. But it's easier just to dig that dirt out. Now my watermelon plants is gonna be bigger. I thought about that a while ago. Some of my holes may not be big enough. ordered these yesterday and I shouldn't have. I didn't know I was going to be planting today. They come out easier when they're a little on the dry side than they do when they're on the wet side. But you want to take your fingers and go around the edge of that and make sure it's closed in good and ain't no air pockets. Now, we still supposed to get another cool front coming. So these okras is going to be slow getting started. But I want to go on and get them out. That's why I'm predicting the ones I plant from seeds are going to catch up with them. Actually, I got enough starts to do the whole row, but I want to do some in seeds.
12 of them planted. And I'm finna go get my seeds and we're gonna plant 10 seeds in the ground. All right, guys, I got my okra seed. Now we're finna plant the last 10 and just putting seed direct in the ground. So up next we finna get our watermelons. First I gotta decide how I'm gonna plant these for us. I think I'm gonna put the cantaloupes on this end because my garden kind of slopes down in the rain. Put the golden watermelons in the middle because I ain't doing them one watermelon on one row, cantaloupe on another row guys. I'm doing it in blocks, crossways. So I'm thinking cantaloupes on that end, golden watermelons in the middle, sugar babies on that end. So let me go get them out of the greenhouse and we'll get started on that. All right guys, here's the cantaloupe plants. I got way more plants than I thought, so I may not be planting no seeds. I may just go on and plant these as pretty as they are and then if the cool weather gets them or something then plant me some seeds. We'll see when I start planting them. But I ain't wanting but like 10 cantaloupes and 10 of each watermelon. And I got way more plants than I got places to plant them. I think when I planted these I actually had it figured on two foot spacing and that extra row over there planted. Anyway, this will be enough for us. Hey guys, I'm finna make another game change. I started off on these rows, said I was gonna skip six foot before I started. Since I got so many plants, I'm finna back up there and I'm gonna be three foot. Put me three more holes across there, that way I can get three more of these plants in. Hey right, guys, the cantaloupe's planted. Now, I know in my other video I said I was gonna be planting sugar cube cantaloupes. Well, some of these are sugar cube that I'd save the seeds myself. And some of these are Hale's Jumbo. And I just kind of mixed them around in there. So we got 12 cantaloupe seeds. Now we're finna move on to the watermelon. Now y'all can see this takes a way lot longer planting this when you planting in that ground cover. So you got pluses and cons. It's harder to plant in, but then again, you ain't dealing with all them weeds. And I'd rather take more time right now than I had to fool with weeds, cause when things start growing and I'm busy, got other things to do and work and stuff, I ain't got time to be weeding no garden. 
So anyway, let's move on to our watermelon. All right, guys, so next I'm gonna be planting the golden, on golden watermelons. And then I'm gonna be planting sugar baby watermelons. Now I know y'all done seen enough of this cause it's the same old stuff over and over. So I'm gonna get everything planted, get it watered in. I'll get back with y'all and just show you a ending shot of the garden. So I'll be back in a moment. All right, guys, we got them planted. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I can't say that I'm gonna agree with starting watermelon plants instead of just planting the seed. I've always just popped the seed in the ground. This year I wanted to try doing the plants. Now I understand it wouldn't have been quite as hard and time consuming if you ain't got the ground cover you're planting through. But with the ground cover, it would have been easy just to pop the seed in there to cover it up way like quicker. Same way with the okra. So I don't know. You this should get me a head start, but if a Another cold front comes through, which they said we're going to get. I don't know what it's going to do to them watermelons. But I can tell you this, if they don't make it, it's just going to be some seeds stuck in the ground next time. But guys, we got 12 cantaloupes, 12 golden on golden watermelon, and 16 sugar baby watermelons. So that ought to be plenty of watermelons. We got a row of zipper peas, a row of potatoes, which they all didn't come up right here on this end, but I got my bed over there in the garden. And we got a row of okra. Now, I'm saving this row. Unless I come up with something to plant on this row, I'm through planting my garden this year, except for my sweet potato slips, and I'm only gonna do just one little bed over our sweet potatoes, because where I live, we can get sweet potatoes from the farmers here that locally grow them, so. I'm just doing that because I've never grew sweet potatoes because you ain't had no sense in growing sweet potatoes living here where I live. But guys, my back hurts and my knees hurt. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's why I like my raised bed gardening. But I hope you enjoyed this little video. Like I said, I think every gardener and homesteader needs one of them yeah, a concrete rake, but they so light and wide, and you can do so much with them. And if you're going to use this ground cover, that's the best little torch to have is that one on that little hose, so you ain't got to turn your bottle upside down. My watermelons, I got them watered in, cantaloupes and stuff's all watered in, and you can look at them, they look plumb dead out there, just laid over. But I'm hoping with this sun and this about to have heat today and tomorrow, Put that water on them. I'm hoping they'll be standing back up pretty in the morning. Kind of makes me sick right now doing all that work and look out there and that's what they look like. <laughs> but a lot of times your transplants do that when you plant them and the next morning they'll be perked back up a little bit. But I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. But if you're watching this, guys, and you ain't never subscribed, please reach down there and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell don't cost you a thing you may see a video get a notification something you want to watch if i make videos and you don't want to watch them i understand that too but for all you who subscribed out there the best way you can help me is if you reach down there and hit that share button and share my videos with any of your friends on your social media that you think that enjoy watching my videos that'll what will help me the best but I appreciate y'all watching. You can check out my website, www.poorboyslittlehomestead.com. And as always, I hope y'all have a blessed week. God bless. See y'all next time. <music>